Hey, what's going on, peoples? This is the uh, 103rd episode of Break of Bates. Me and Madam B are going to change things up a little bit. And in this one, we're going to be talking about uh, four books that we enjoy reading. Now, it's going to be two from her, and there's going to be two from me. So I hope you guys uh, uh, enjoy uh, listening to this and possibly find some inspiration into checking out these books and or giving us recommendations in the comment section below for books you would like for us to discuss. Let's go ahead and start the discussion. Now, when I'm saying this discussion, we're going to be talking about, you know, uh, no, no specific genre or anything, just books that we've enjoyed reading. Uh, do you want me to start it off? Okay, the matter be did this. I don't know what this means, but okay. Um, all right. Um, one of my favorite books of all time. I'm not going to I just really enjoy it. Uh, it's uh, the Forgotten Realms, Pool of Radiance, Ruins of Myth, Drenor book. I loved reading it. It's a fantasy book. And it basically follows the you know, traditional group of strangers come together to go on this really cool adventure and they're trying to stop this evil evil presence from taking over the land. Uh, it was written by Carrie DeBreeze. And I just, one thing I love about the book um, uh, is the characters, especially the main character who's this thief named Kistrel. Um, and she's the type of character that if there was a horror movie she would probably survive because when they're getting into all of these uh adventures and deal with all these different situations she's the voice of reason her character any questions about the book because uh, in the book these three these four strangers mm -hmm. are brought together and kiss kestrels against her will has to is joined by uh, it has to join. Okay, you say who now? Her name is Kestrel. Okay, and uh, she's a thief, and she's trying to look out for number one. She ends up getting uh, forced into this journey, uh, into like enemy territory, while these these crazy creatures and stuff exist. Basically, has to help this group save the world. Um. The main antagonist of the uh, book, I can't remember her name, but it's uh, this sorceress woman who's uh, band together with this Dracolic, which is like a zombie version of a dragon. Uh, yeah, a zombified dragon. And they're trying to pools of radiance, which corrupt the land and the living around it. So this would be a fantasy? Yeah. I'm not sure if it's like dark fantasy, but just it's, it is a fantasy adventure game. Uh, and it's, it's based off the game uh, Pool of Radiance, which I haven't played. Okay. But uh, it's actually a pretty sweet read. It does feel like a video game in some aspects, especially with the pacing. But I do appreciate Debris' uh, writing when it came to, because uh, it follows Kestrel's perspective the entire time. And I and it perspective because it's humorous. Mm -hmm. Like if the characters do something like if they're trying if they go on like a side quest to go help somebody out that has nothing to do with the main quest, she would be that character would be like, These blockheads, I don't understand what is wrong with you people. We're already on a quest. We don't need to help this person. <laughs> She's like that person. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I do and I do like that. And I do like how the characters do develop and how she does have an appreciation for each one. Uh, there's a, it's an elf lady, I can't remember her name, a holy knight, and then there's a guard, I believe, I can't remember his name. Um, and she has the most animosity against the holy knight mm -hmm. because they're, they're like complete opposites. He's like holier than thou. She's more of it is what it is. And uh, Kim Day constantly clashed the entire story but there is a lot of development by the end of the book so what do you have for us today um well my first book is by author uh mary monroe it's called god don't like ugly it's actually 
of, it's not one of the first books I read, but um, my mom, she had a whole, like, well, I'm just gonna call it library, and she liked these books, and then after she got through reading it, she just, you know, I read it. It took me one day to actually read this book because it was that good. It follows um, this girl, her name is Annette, and her mom. Um, now, Annette, she has to deal with um, growing up in the it's 1950s in the South. Um, she has to deal with, well, actually, of course, being black, but she's like a more like a dark, dark black. So she has to deal with that, and she's big for her age, so she has to deal with that. Big as in like height wise, or big as in like weight, like obesity wise, like me. So she has to deal with that. Not only that, her mom now wants to take in a border, so they can help a um, border. Yeah, What's that? it you know take in somebody for the other room. Oh, okay. Yeah, to help with the bills or whatever, and she chooses this man, Mister Boatwright. Uh, we had jokes about Mr. Bo right when all of us had finished reading the book. Oh, Mr. Bo, we got right. And so now, not only does she have to deal with what she's already dealing with, she has to deal with him. And he's like a old, nasty old man. So, you know. Coming on to her. Yeah. Story. So she, he begins to molest and rape her at, um, was seven or eight and he did that until she was 18. her mom worked and then she really come on, i don't have time for it even when she was like okay is there something wrong she don't she didn't have time for annette so annette begins to later on she begins to talk to a neighbor down the road now rhoda she's She's one of them people like, okay, I'll, you know, I'm pretty and you ugly. So, make, you know, I mean, I'll be friends with you. So, you know, you know how people think. Yeah. So, that's, that's what happened. Um, Rhoda was a mean little itch. Ooh. Yeah, she, she did stuff. She actually was, she actually committed a couple of murders in the book which was made it so good because nobody knew it was her only annette knew annette of course i'm rhoda's friend i'm not gonna tell her she'll stop being my friend i I don't know have you committed any murders no i have not committed any murders could you speak up louder no i have not committed (laughs) any murders i'm gonna pull the mic closer But um, during that the story, and then it um, the years go by. I would say they became. Um, it wasn't like best friends. It's just like okay, I know what you did, but I'm not gonna tell because I don't want you to stop being my friend. There right. are some people, you know, dealing with that, you know, especially back then. And um, she told Rhoda about what doing after the fact that uh annette became pregnant (laughs) (laughs) god damn yeah they did not they didn't like that uh rhoda was like okay to keep this from getting out you're gonna drink it out kill it so my bad trip down the stairs so uh, i'm my bad for the way i said that so rhoda gave her some alcohol and Later in the tub, next thing you know, she was in the hospital. Her mom was by her side. She was like, did it. And she was looking directly at Mr. Boatwright, Mr. Boatwright. And he had one leg. So despite doing that, she had to help him put on his leg every time they did something or, you know, he did something to her. So that was, you know, messed up. It did. I don't say it turned out good. There is. Um, I after, say I don't think it turned out. Too no, good. after the book, there's a, the, there's a whole series of. Um, oh, chocolate! Uh, don't interrupt. I'm me. not gonna eat them all. 
there's a series of the books and they are very good but in this book i liked it because it was well it was of course the first book after that um at the end let's just say mr boat right got what was coming to him you know thank rhoda for that i about to say, i was thinking about that like yeah she killed that old man yes oh she did a lot and during that time and the years together then you know so that's why i meant thought you know okay i have rhoda as my friend and you know i'll and but in reality in the book you can see how rhoda was using her so in the books coming up they um they did things together some would say okay they are friends and some would say yes she's still using her but mm -hmm. in the end of all the books Rhoda she she kind of got what was coming to her she it, it wasn't good it was actually kind of sad but this book I did like it it was like I said I finished it in one day so it was really good hmm. and I'm sorry if I Talk to too long. Oh, good. No bad. Yeah. Got into it. In terms of Annette's, uh, does she develop as a character? She does, but she still kind of the being the dark skin, and she still kind of suffered with the weight. But she did develop. You know, she had you know got her job. Um, she kind of met someone. But it wasn't like that because after Mr. Boatwright did that to her, she didn't feel comfortable. She didn't want nobody like that, mm. you know. So she wasn't, it's like she wasn't safe. So she felt like she couldn't, you know, actually, you know, really do anything. Yeah, connect with anybody like mm -hmm. that. Are you sure what's the other girl's name? Rona? Rhoda. Rhoda. How do you like her character? Like I said, Rhoda. Rhoda was mean, but it was like Annette was it's like she Annette needed her and she needed Annette for no, I meant like towards like do you actually like the character? To be honest, I, I do like Rhoda's character when I read the book. What <laughs> what she did, it, it wasn't good, but after when they did explain it and she explained it. Then it still wasn't called for, but you know, Annette and Rhoda, if anything other than that, they would have been like good friends. If they would have met, like, you know, she wouldn't have thought of said, okay. Uh, but at times she did tell Annette she was pretty, you know, to try to put a smile on her face and everything. Okay. That's, you know, I, that's good. That's good. I, I like that. You can have a douchebag character, but. As long as they got personality and depth to them, they're, they're pretty cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to jump to my uh, uh, other book. And this book is called Savages, written by Don Winslow. Now, uh, they did have a movie for it, and the movie was all right. Uh, I actually did like the cast they did have for it. Uh, Benicio Del Toro was a douchebag, but he played that role. But... um. The story is basically about these three, uh, I guess you could say entrepreneurs. There's this guy named uh, Chan, I forgot the other man's name, and their girlfriend, oh, there's these two best friends and they share a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And they're in this lucrative business of this high grade weed in California where they're selling it to the higher upper class and they're rich, they're banking. And unfortunately, they garnered the attention of the cartels. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, after uh, declining their offer to join them, the cartels take it upon themselves to kidnap O. And now the story kind of winds down to what Chan and this other guy named, okay, I keep forgetting his freaking name, what Chan and him are trying to uh, get her back. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually a very sweet read, but it's not per, not per se the story itself that just reaches out there and grabs you and just pulls you in it's 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 winslow's writing 
that I really appreciate it. Uh, there is something poetic about it in the way he expresses uh, the way how he expresses like people's points of views and stuff like that. Uh, it's it's very interesting. If you ever get a chance to uh, read it, it's a really good read, and it's also informative too. Like it gives you a little bit of insight into marijuana, marijuana and the drug trade. Marijuana. Yeah, mar- <laughs> mar- mar- Wanda. <laughs> we come from Wakanda. <laughs> We're gonna see that in the Black Panther movie. <laughs> they gonna be back though. Huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. uh, but no, I mean, it's it's actually pretty decent. Uh, a, a really good read. Uh, it kind of starts off a little slow. That's mostly because they're trying to get to know the characters. And the characters actually have, they're kind of stereotypical. You got one the, uh, guy's uh, really laid back. Uh, the other Chan character. Well, the first guy, I can't remember. Again, I keep forgetting his freaking name. But anyway, he's laid back. He's more peaceful. He's about enjoying life and things. And he's actually kind of the the, the person that's behind them actually making the weed and growing it and stuff. Uh, he's very laid back and likable character. Chan is the more like violent type. Like he's like the muscle of the group. So it's like if any competitors kind of come up trying to threaten a business, he takes care of them. He's, he's a ex military vet, so he don't play. He's, he. he when they say he about that life, he's about that life. It's like present, or I mean, it's like past, or like wait. No, it's uh, cause they wrote the book a couple of years ago. A couple, it's been like I think this is a 2010 10 book. So, so it's, he, it's more modern. It's modern day. Is that what he's placing the uh the story on the uh, setting? Yeah, it's it's modern day. Oh. And uh, of course, and O O is fun loving. She loves these two characters. They they love her. Uh, yes, it is a it is that type of relationship, but it works between those characters. But and you and that's one thing I can't say about it. You can actually feel uh, and you see that relationship how great it is. Like they have each other's back. Mm-hmm. But it's it's something about the writing that's just very engaging. The way he just he just just throws the words down when he's describing things, whether it's the euphoria of getting high, whether it's the euphoria of being with the people that you love, you know, he just does a great job. And, you know, there's, there's a bit of action in it. There's a bit of, a uh, bit of thrill, thrillness in it. Thrillingness, suspense, thrill, 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 thrilling, like suspense. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of that in here too, especially during this more of the, like the second and third act when things start picking up with the, their, the cartel and it's a violent, it's violent too. It, the bit the cartel come, the first thing the cartel do is they don't even send like an ambassador or nothing. They just send them a little email, a video, and it's um people's heads with a chainsaw. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, join us, or this is gonna happen to you. And I was like, God, oh, yeah, some poor business. I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess it's an effective technique for getting business partners and stuff, but gosh, well, they really didn't have much of a choice then, yeah. Uh, and the ending is uh, it's kind of it's, it's kind of sad, uh, but it's actually it, it actually has a really good climax. Um, and it's it's pretty, it's pretty decent, it's pretty good ending, I, in my opinion. Like I said, the best thing about it besides the writing is actually the characters. Yeah, they're a little bit stereotypical, but they're actually cool. Mm-hmm. Like I love reading reading about them and their interactions and stuff. So what's your other one? Uh well, my other one it is called uh Fear Nothing by Lisa Gardner. It took me a while to read this book, but after I finished it. Um, realized it was actually a good book. It takes place, um, well, it, uh, with two sisters, uh, Shanna, it's either Shanna or Shana, and Adeline. Now, they have to, they grew up with, I guess, a serial killer father, so he was killing people putting them, uh, skinning them, and putting them in the basement and taking pieces of their skin, 
and putting them in jars. There's so many jokes I could make right about So here. they had to basically knowing that their father was a serial killer, his name was Harry Day. Um Dirty Harry. <laughs> but um anyway, the the story starts off with now Harry Day is dead, but the story starts off with a killing like he is. So they're thinking, okay, you know, like possible copycat. Possible copycat or he came back. Maybe one of his kids or something like yeah. that. Um, now, uh, let's see. Adeline, um, she was born with, I just say it's um, what it, an issue. She can't feel anything. So, Make them all over again. Oh, God. So it's called congenital insensitivity. Insen- yeah. I tell you, so tired. Anyway, she can't feel nothing, so she becomes a pain therapist. What, really? So, um, the cop who's on this case uh, with the murders, she got hurt on the case trying to. Um, she got hurt in the house. She thought it was one of her partners. Really, I don't know. She didn't know who it was. All of a sudden. She fell down the steps, cracked her skull to go to pain therapy, of course. But all the while she has the she wants to catch him, you know, for what he did. So she turns to the pain therapist, and the pain therapist turns to her sister because every time she goes visit her sister once a year, she goes once a year. Her sister knows something about the thing she knows like more than she should know like she don't watch tv or anything like that but she's like she every time she comes in there she says something like all right so hold on let me get to get it straight okay (laughs) now the story was set uh the the past most of the stuff was oh so okay some of the events of the past revolve around the fact that two sisters had a killer father yeah play on words uh a killer father (laughs) Uh, at this point, he's dead. Mm-hmm. They're both grown up. One's yeah. in the hospital, and the other uh, one is the pain therapist. Yeah, but basically, it's a nut house. But is she the therapist, though? Huh? So the, one sister, the therapist, and one's actually in the nut house. Yes. Okay, so they're both there. You like like she works there? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we got this detective. Mm-hmm. Her name is. Um, She's also in other novels, uh, D.D. Warren. Okay, Miss D.D. Warren is... Uh, She's the detective on the case. Okay, so... Going on the case... When, who bought the head? Yes, who what? I said, who bought the head? No, she bought the head. Yeah, the detective. Okay. Somebody uh, pushed the detective down the stairs, cracked her skull, and she had to come off the case. They thought it was something and else. she happened to go to the, the sister. That pain therapist. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So she got, a, she got that black. Okay. You know blah. how like they ah. ask after a shooting they ask was it a good shoot? They ask detectives that. You think you like do you think it was a good shoot or why did you draw your weapon? We don't see a weapon on him. That's what they thought. They okay. thought it was okay. him. No. They said okay. She drew her weapon, right? As she was going down and said, she said she was firing at somebody. They said she was just saying things. So oh, after okay. that, they, they, yeah, they took her off the case, took her weapon and stuff like that. So, so she pursued somebody and got jumped. Huh? Yeah, basically. Okay. She, and she was on the case then. Anyway, I'm, I'm stupid there about it. I need to. <laughs> it, it's kind of a, that's why it took me a little bit longer to read this story. It's kind of a hard story to follow. But in between all of that, there's still killings and they, they're still taking a piece of skin. They're off of people. They're actually, what do you call this? Filleting them. Filleting them, yes. Not fillet. 
Flay. Flaying them. They filleting them. Because <laughs> you like filet, I'm like, what, They fillet, fillet. They flay, flay. They flay. That's that flay, flay. Ah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, there you go. She rhyming now. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's taking a, a little bit, but. Yeah, so the sister, her name is Shanna. When he says she knows more than she should, which means when she goes there, she like asks the question and is like, how could you know that? They call it, um, I want to say they called it the Rose Killer because at least Rose every time after the killings. I bet you I know why uh, the girl knows stuff she don't know, that she don't need to be known. Why? She got the shine. <laughs> <laughs> shine, shine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just she <sighs> she paid a lot more attention to She's very observant to her father than she should have. You know, she was four. Her sister was one when all that took place. So and then what made them separate as kids, she, it's not funny, but her mom walked in on, on them one day and she was just cutting Adeline. That's how she knew that day she couldn't feel when they were little. She kept cutting Adeline with scissors and Adeline was just sitting there, just bleeding. So Sh Shannon was already messed up when she was little, so. She got that Freddy Krueger treatment. Anyway, at the end, it revealed the killer. Wait. Dun, 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 I don't know why I'm doing this, because that's not even in it. I know, right? <laughs> because... It did reveal the killer, and I'm sorry, you might have to read the book, or might read a little bit more on it. I the book or whatever, right? No, the book is right here. It revealed the killer. No, no, don't tell me. I was going to show it on screen. Mm -hmm. This book. Oh, yeah, that's backwards. Uh, this yeah. says, fear nothing. Not Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, at the end, it kind of surprised me what happened. At the end. Um, they both sisters... Kind of kill themselves. <laughs> Thank you for spoiling. They don't know how. Read the book if you want to read it. Like I said, it took me a while because I was in the process of moving. Hmm? I was in the, <laughs> I was in the process of uh, moving and stuff like that. But when I did finish it, it was really good. And you know, forgive me for you know jumping from place to place but it is actually a good read um i want to read more of her books um especially they said they got more with dd warren the detective before all that happened i know i said uh uh four books we went through those four books we can we still do the two more no i'm sorry let me see um well why okay let me ask you the, why do you like this book I, I like mystery. I like suspense. Um, it didn't turn me on in any way. The, the book was nasty. All I heard about was slaying and people and doctors who couldn't feel and anything. I just like suspense novels. Okay. okay. I really do. Okay, who's your favorite character? Oh, my... Uh, well, up until the end, Adeline was. Until... But she, what she did was a good thing, though. Tell you, that's that. When it comes to those mysteries, I'm going to go with the song uh, reveal with that badass music. And then that's when it starts kicking in really loud. So it's like, dun, 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 Adeline. Can we stop? <laughs> and we started watching that song. And the whole reveal thing was just completely awesome. Um, do you want to go ahead and go one more, one more book? Um, because um, we can do the three. 
I'll let him know eight. Uh, unless he got some book ideas, we, then we can go for seven. Oh, we, we uh, uh, texting Ken right now. Just ask him, does he want to talk about books first? Because we're talking about books at seven. Hmm. I'm, I'm talking to the crowd. I'm talking to the crowd. Oh, okay, I should have. You know, I'm uh, invisible right now. Y'all will catch the big reveal of Madam B one day. They already seen you. Hush. <laughs> anyway, um, my favorite actually genre of books. I used to be just all romance. I'm talking about uh, Rochelle Ayers. If anybody know what she uh, writes, she really writes some good ones. Um, Brenda Jackson. I used to be all about her. And then I started reading uh, suspense and mystery. Um, I think I read about maybe one or two Stephen King. But um, we're getting to the specifics of all. No, I'm just trying to keep them. the conversation going. I'm okay. sorry. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. You, uh, we we go. We got two more books. We got. We still got time. I go ahead and throw one down. You get the other one. Okay. All right. Um, I want to talk about one of my favorite Star Wars books, and it's called The Approaching Storm. On, in this book, of we have course. four. Yeah, the four Jedi who end up going. To this small planet uh during this whole trade dispute with the separatists and the republic i mean this movie is basically set between i mean the book is basically set between the events looks awesome uh set between events of the phantom menace and uh attack of the clones at this point of course anakin's a teenager obi-wan's trying to teach him how to be a jedi uh, we get illuminara undy one of uh, awesome jedi character we get her Paris. Her uh, apprentice, Bareth O'Keefe, I believe. Uh, I keep messing that girl's name up. But um, it's a great read. It is a slow burner, uh, but it's great because it gives a lot of exposition into these four characters, how they relate to one another. Also, how the Jedi, uh, it also gives you a lot of insight into how the Jedi perceive life and how their culture and uh, customs is. So I really appreciated that. Uh, I think, I, yeah, I messed up that name. Barris Ophi. I always mess that name up. Uh, I did. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of political things that are going on in the background. And for some people, I will admit, they probably won't like it. Me, personally, I thought it gave a bit of intrigue and mystery, as well as show a bit more of the events that were kind of going on with the separatists and things like that. So I really appreciated that. Uh, I really loved and I like how this book kind of explores like Padawans and, and their relationship to their mentors. Uh, I love the relationship between uh, Obi-Wan and Illuminar. They're, they were pretty cool. I like the little rivalry between Barris and uh, Anakin. I kind of perceive Anakin to be kind of weird. Um, uh, but yes, uh, I really enjoyed this book. Uh, it's probably, it's one of my top, 10 favorite Star Wars books. And I just love the direction uh, that the uh, that the author uh, took it. Uh, Alan Dean Foster, up to you. You are a great writer and did a great job with the Star Wars. Um, I can get pictures of my hand? What do you think that is? I, I don't know. I didn't. Yeah. But this whole time I got a new phone, I did not know I couldn't get pictures. I, I thought I couldn't get pictures, and all of a sudden I'm getting pictures. Wow. Uh, but you want to go ahead and uh, start on your last book? Yeah. Right. Um, my last book is um, now, uh, you know, like I said, my mom, she liked to read. So whatever book she got done with, um, I just went at, went out after her and, um, and read them. But I read this one. Um, it's called God's Gift to Women by Michael Bazin. Michael Bay. Bazden. Oh. Oh my goodness. Very, very good. Basically, if you whoever read it, and if you want to look at it as a thin line between love and hate book, that's <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's probably it. But he did actually in thin line between love and hate, at least he did go out with the woman. Book, uh, Julian Payne, 
he's trying to make it as a um, radio, I guess to say, what, radio personality. Um, he has a deep voice. He's smooth. He's masculine. So that's what they like to hear. Um, he No wife, but he has a daughter. So I guess, you know, one night, I guess, clubbing, you know, trying hooked up with the girl, this woman, her name was Olivia. He, she was everything he wanted that night in a woman. So gave her a night of passion that just flipped her weave. Okay. I'm basically, yeah. So next day or during the next couple weeks, he, he moved. Building up his uh, rep, getting on with his wife, him and his daughter. Actually met somebody new. They started going out. Her name is Terry. Um, I love the brothers. Was uh, it the brothers? Yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Terry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, hooked up with her. They start, you know, she's good with his daughter and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden he start, oh, you know, text, you know, like, how come you didn't call me back? You know, mm. seeing uh, uh, people across the way staring at him through, you know, sunglasses, and you know, you know how that is. Yeah, that creepy so, stuff. Basically, what she sets out to do is stalk, make his life a living hell, basically. Mm -hmm. That's how it go. Um, that's what the majority of the book is about. Um, and then Terry find, finding out and, you know, okay, I don't want to deal with this, but I love him. Yeah. So, you know, so plus he got a daughter to protect, so What's the first book? So I don't like ugly. So basically, that's what the majority of the middle book of the middle is about. Basically, he did learn in the end, with just like Martin Lawrence did. Yeah, so through that <laughs> window and then that water after he got shot. Like I said, it, it was on my list, but I wish I did have another like good, good book to like really get into it. Basically, this is just. Your basic thin line between love and hate plot. Mm -hmm. So I am uh sorry, but she was really angry at him that he left her high and dry after a night of just passion. But before they did begin, he did tell her, you know, this is I'm just looking for, you know, that yeah, the hit and quit it. Yep, he did tell her. She was like, okay. Well. But okay, let me ask you this then. Do you sympathize with her character? And like, is there any redeemable qualities to her character besides her craziness? Well, she was crazy throughout the whole book. Um what if he if he told her and then she said, Okay, that's all I'm looking for too. I don't understand because if he if he told her, okay, you know, that's all I'm looking for. And she's like, okay, that's all I'm looking for. He didn't know she was actually a kind of crazy chick to begin with. But that's where he comes in. That's where he, he has his faults at. So is he a sympathetic character? In the in the middle, yeah. But Terry. Tab. Will you stop? <laughs> she she really had little. God dang it! Yeah, what? She really had little to uh to deal with. It. She was just caught in the middle, basically. She was like, "Okay, I don't want to deal with that," but I love him. So. Mm. It's like okay, I, I you know, you know, you ain't gonna touch my man. Just it's a good book. So you got okay. So all right, what are the highlights of it? 
like that ma- makes it stand out to you that you like really like like what are some really memorable moments did she like beat him up and and then tell him to get his romp and and then get his girlfriend to come over there and then hold them both at gunpoint then there's a struggle and then they fall out the window into the pool in, uh in the uh radio station she did have she was in there and she i think it was either gu- gunpoint or knife point Okay. That she had Carrie and uh, maybe I think the daughter too. So it wasn't like a sad, sad ending. No, I mean, he did get his ass beat, but you know, <laughs> got it. You know, I mean, I think at the end she did fall out the window, but then when he looked, she wasn't there. I, I think now I'm not. Gonna, <laughs> I'm okay. not gonna say she did a Jason. <laughs> Be like uh, the other chick off thin line between love and hate up in a uh, up in the ha- hospital like this. <laughs> she got that <laughs> got, got that sock with that orange. In they talk about it, <laughs> be a or There's enough deranged people to go ahead and go with that, so. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sorry if I didn't have as much insight on this book as I did with the other ones, but you know. You can't even know a pretty good description. Got up the characters and the plot is really did did it flow well enough in terms of pacing? Like did it feel like it slowed down in certain parts? Oh no, it was a very good book. When I remember it being a good book, a real page turn. But that you know, that was back then. Like I said, it, it was like a thin line between love and hate book. Okay. A woman's scar. Hell hath no fury than a fat guy who is hungry. I'm just messing. I'm just messing. I would know. I am that fat guy. But anyway, <laughs> we've had a really good discussion over the six books that we've uh, read and we've enjoyed. Pool of Radiance, Ruins of Myth, Draenor, Fear Nothing, Savages, The Approaching Storm, and Star Wars, God's Gift to Women, God Don't Like Ugly. So guys, go out there, check those books out. If you've read them, give us your thoughts on them in the comment section below. Also, be sure to hit that like, share, subscribe, and the notification button to get the best of what's going on here on the Nerd Chase channel. And we will catch you guys later. Nerd Chasing Company out. Bye.